Well, I promise you guys it wasn't planned that we're matching shirts. Um, I think we're just still depressed about what happened at the end of WrestleMania, but that is yeah. not what we're talking about, Tomas. It has been a long time since we discussed an NXT pay-per-view. A very yeah. long time. A very rare NXT review from us. Um, and it's not because, okay, we have a kind of a, I don't want to say a love-hate relationship with NXT, but I think we're not the only ones in this boat when we say when Triple H unfortunately had his his heart his heart condition episode and he was taken away of head of creative, Vince McMahon and Bruce Pritchard took over as head of creative at NXT and they they stripped this thing of its humanity, its dignity. They took away the black and gold. They turned it into this weird tie-dye new logo. They no more Nigel McGuinness, no more William Regal, no more Triple H's whole foundation was basically broken down in this new transition to NXT. And why? Because Vince McMahon was mad that NXT didn't beat AEW in the ratings. Yep. Um, so that was I his punishment. Yeah, I don't but think that's theoretically, theoretically, he is proving that he is a madman and doesn't know how to book it. So he just Absolutely. decided to go in and ruin it himself by that logic. And, you know, we have such fond memories. And one of my biggest memories was the very first time, the first episode of Dynamite went head-to-head -head to NXT. You had Cody Rhodes and Sammy Guevara on one show, and then you had Matt Riddle versus Adam Cole for the NXT title on the other show. It was it was awesome. The Wednesday Night Wars were awesome to see what NXT and AEW were bringing up against each other. Um, we have so many memories, so many memories of NXT, whether it be Andrade, Shinsuke Nakamura, Robert Roode, Ben Balor, Samoa Joe, Sammy Zayn, Kevin Owens, Drew McIntyre. The list goes on and on and on of just how awesome the old NXT was. And I'm talking about from 2014 to 2021, even in that weird pandemic point in, you know, the CWC, the 2021 to 2020 era was pretty damn good, all things considered. And so many stars have started in NXT are now staples of Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown. Now, all those stars are gone. They were either released or brought up to the main roster. And what we had left were Vince McMahon's basically, basically Vince's wet dream for the developmental. He just got a bunch of models, athletes, gymnasts who never have stepped in a professional wrestling before in their lives. And he just gave them all stupid gimmicks and said, this is the new NXT. I will say from 2021, probably till about a little middle of 2022, it was hard. It was depressing. It was not the NXT I have loved for the past, you know, seven years and yeah. it was it was hard we stopped doing nxt reviews here you stopped <clears throat> watching nxt altogether but i still yep. felt an obligation to keep an eye on the product um and i will say it, it's been a chore it has been a huge chore to watch nxt these past couple years um let's get some positives out of the way the wrestling is fantastic i'm not mm -hmm. saying none of these people can work i'm not saying that the work rate isn't good there have been some really good wrestlers that come through here that we're going to talk about in the show the Carmelo, Carmelo Hayes, the Wes Lees, the Braun Breakers, the uh, he, the the, the, the what's the Stole Rukas, the you have uh, Ilya Dragunov, you have Ilya JD Dragunov. McDonough, Axiom is really good. Um, but you know, I mean, but yeah, it's not the same. I I think I can agree same. with you there. It's definitely not the same. But the good news is this show sitting there from a live perspective definitely felt very much like a takeover, and that's another reason why we decided to review this because. I wanted to review it because I was in the building for this one in the uh, Staples Center. I refuse to call it the Crypto.com Arena because fuck that. Um, the crypto but, Arena. No, it was um, a it was a really good venue. Uh, Tomas did not go because I, you know, <laughs> considering it was night one of WrestleMania and considering the show was at ten o'clock in the morning, I did not feel like I was going to have the energy to make an NXT show. I wanted yeah. to save myself for Mania, but I will admit. I stayed back in the hotel room and as I was watching the show and as I was feeling myself, I was just like, I could have did it. That definitely would have been a fun time. It wasn't a huge regret, but I feel like I, I could have tagged along that aspect real quick before we get into this. Mm -hmm. If there's one criticism and one big nod, I want to give to this era of NXT. Uh, the nod would be thank you to the fans. The fans have never stopped cheering. And I feel like the fans and the NXT environment has never gone away Sure, I miss the creative chant. I miss the Sasha's Ratchet. I miss the Nikki's Got a Secret. I miss all of that originality. 
but the fans mm-hmm. have kept this brand alive. They've kept oh, it totally above water. My biggest criticism, and even though this show is being booked by my favorite wrestler of all time, Shawn Michaels, not everybody needs a gimmick. And if that's one thing I can do, not everybody needs a gimmick. You got, uh, you got uh, the Tony D'Angelo with the whole mafia gimmick. You have uh, back in the day, you had Duke Hudson with the poker gimmick. You had. You know, so Ron many, Breaker just, breaks things. Yeah, I just feel he's like, a strong like, man. <laughs> I feel like that was more of a Vincent Pritchard thing, and now that Vincent Pritchard are no longer in the helms, and it's all Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels definitely focuses more on storytelling, and he and he loves the throwbacks. You know, this past year we've noticed so many throwbacks to old storylines, especially from the '90s. But that's my thing. Like, now not everyone needs to get. Yeah, gimmick. that's um, that's honestly, and I love Shawn Michaels to death. He's not Hunter. He's not Hunter when it comes to booking because I've noticed something very peculiar when it comes to Shawn Michaels and how he approaches putting a show together. A lot of the big angles that we'll discuss, especially in this opener, they feel very much recycled from his own career. Exactly. Yeah. Um, And we'll get, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get into it with this opener, but I got to tell you, man, this show from a live perspective, I thought it was really fun. Shout out to uh, Jacob, who you guys will be seeing on the podcast tomorrow, because we're going to actually go through the whole experience. It's going to be No Holds Barred, very much a laid back podcast. We're going to tell the whole story of how everything went down. We're going to tell some of the uh, the funny hijinks that we were getting into. Tomas will be there, of course. It's going to be a fun time. Smash that subscribe yeah. button. Hit that thumbs up as well if you want to see more. Um, this show... I thought a lot of the originality came from the fans and there were a lot of original chants that I can uh, touch on from a live perspective. Shout out to Jacob and shout out to uh, John who we met, who flew all the way from Brooklyn, I believe Brooklyn or uh, I I can't remember off the top of my head, which uh, borough it was, but John, if you stumble across this video, you were really cool, man. So uh, really cool to share a standard deliver with you. Um, This was a good jump into the Yeah. Better than I was expecting to the main. Yeah. But before we jump into the main show, there was a pre-show match and that was, you mm-hmm. want to talk about gimmicks, and this is probably the best gimmick in NXT right now. You have Chase University, Duke Hudson, uh, Andre Chase, and uh, Thea Hale taking on Schism, which uh, is I, I, I love Schism. Schism, mm-hmm. Rip Fowler, Jagger Reed. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Tyler. Don't Bate forget was Tyler Bate was with too. Chase U. Yep. Tyler Bate, my favorite wrestler from NXT UK, is still you know alive and fighting on the NXT brand. But back to Schism. Uh, Joe Casey, Rip Fowler, Jagger Reed, and who was their tag team partner? Somebody Ava Rain. Well. Ava Rain, whose real name is Simone Johnson, the daughter of one Dwayne Johnson from his first marriage. Um, she, if you look into her eyes and her face, definitely looks a lot like her father. And watching her in her first in ring action against Thea Hale, it's definitely clear this is a um here's my thing about this new iteration of NXT. You're going to get a lot of greenness thrown into the mix. And unfortunately, Ava Rain was one of those. And I feel like she was a bit overexposed in this match, which is weird because it was an eight person tag. Um, So they definitely could have limited her a little bit more, but I think she was, she was fine, but there's definitely a lot of room to grow. Same thing said about her father when he first debuted, but uh so what I have to say about Ava Rain is uh, I have to compliment WWE. They have done an excellent job of not saying that she's the Rock's daughter because mm-hmm. the minute they do mention the Rock's daughter, I feel like that's where the pressure begins. Um, the Rock being one of the greatest, not only professional wrestlers, but one of the biggest stars in the world. <clears throat> there's a lot of pressure on poor Ava to succeed in this business, but um, I think they've done an excellent job, you know, putting her in a faction, which Rocky Maivia is famous for getting his big break in a faction. Um, She is a little green, but so was her father. Um, There's definitely a lot of work there, but like being in this faction, and like I said, Schism, I love Schism. I know a lot of people are kind of eh about them. I think it's awesome. I call them the Wyatt family if they were booked correctly. Joe Gacy (laughs) gets it. Joe Gacy just fucking gets it. Um, He's one of those guys that doesn't have a lot of professional wrestling background, but he's athletic for a man his size. His promo work is excellent in this whole gimmick. He gets it. And mm-hmm. Rip Fowler and Jagger Reed are formerly known as the Grizzled Young Veterans, uh, Zach Gibson and uh, James Drake. I mm-hmm. think they transitioned into this faction pretty well. Um, this was a fun one. And you want to talk about overacts, Chase University. You watch NXT every oh Tuesday my God. on Sci-Fi. These guys are over. Andre Chase, one half of the Bravado Brothers, 
he's another guy that just gets it. He's been in this business for a while. And he took a gimmick that honestly would have sank. And he's really ran with it. Um, Duke Bro, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about Chase U. It's crazy to see how over they are, even just from a live perspective. On a normal night, this would have been, you know, a typical like Alpha Academy style ovation or maybe even a Street Profit style ovation. This was 930 in the morning when these blokes ran out to the ring and people were still fired up to see them. And I was like, how many freaking Red Bulls did all of you have? I just had one in my system. And I was like, oh, man, yeah, these these guys are these guys are hot right now. I mean, it's going to take me a while to kick into it. But yeah, Duke Hudson is a guy that I, when they gave him the poker gimmick, I was like, this guy doesn't need a gimmick. Um, he just needs to be an asshole heel. And I think he does that very well. He was unfortunately put in this position after another member of Chase University that they were giving a push. I'm sorry, I don't remember his name. He got released because apparently he was very difficult to work with and it was just not working out for him. He was thrust into this baby face role, and I think he's doing an excellent job. Mm -hmm. uh, Leah Hale, her energy is unmatched. I love her. She's spunky. She's running all over the place. If you watch her on NXT every week, she's like that little scrappy dog that, uh, that Chase has to hold back from fighting every single person. She's got the school spirit, which she works for. Oh, she certainly does. She and certainly Tyler does. Bate is Tyra Bate. He's... There are three wrestlers that I think of when I think of ultimate underdogs in this modern age. Brian Danielson, Sami Zayn, and Tyler Bate. Tyler Bate is still very young. So Triple H, keep your eye on Tyler Bate and get him up to the main roster because he has that Brian Danielson like well, support. Good news. Good news with the draft coming up. I don't want to get too deep into like, you know, potential spoilers or anything. Tyler Bate is one of those people Triple H is eyeballing because Tyler Bate had a dark match on a raw taping against Dolph Ziggler of all people really turned a lot of heads and so we could be bound for a tighter bait call up and i think he's been ready for at least a couple years um mm -hmm. i can't wait to see what he does i mean i would thrust him into the ic title scene right away with uh gunther maybe even Ilya dragonov if he's ready i don't i wouldn't call up dragonov and bait at the same time but uh it was a fun little match here fun little eight person yeah. tag. clearly ava rain was uh a little bit exposed as a green as she was. Joe Gacy, whole, his yeah. character work, I've got to tell you, his background is more so CZW than anything. Um, mm -hmm. This guy, like, I think if you thrust him in some sort of, like, street fight down the line, he can really, really do a lot of damage and turn a lot of heads. So The big storyline of this, it, it's pretty typical. It's pretty standard. But Schism wants to uh, recruit Duke Hudson into their group. And they do a fun little swerve near the end where Hudson, he gives in schism. That's why mm. Gacy reminds me so much of Bray Wyatt. He he wants Hudson to accept the brace of schism. Hudson just reluctantly looks like he doesn't want to do it, but he throws his Chase U headband down. He grabs the schism shirt. He puts it on. But I could see this coming from a mile away. Just to get that huge baby face pop. He immediately turns on schism and everybody, you know, unites together to take down and defeat schism. This was a fun little match and a fun little feel good moment on the pre-show. Um, like I said, both acts are incredibly over. These are two acts that NXT is getting right. I feel like if you would have put these gimmicks on anybody, and that's what I really appreciate about this NXT is that these gimmicks are stupid, but the right people are going to get them over and they have the right people. Mm hmm. Duke Hudson reminds me so much of a young Wade Barrett, not just in terms of his looks, but his in-ring style, the way he hits people and how hard he hits people. Like, if if WWE does not screw up Duke Hudson like they did with Wade Barrett and just put him in mid-card purgatory in the mid-2010s, I think Duke Hudson could really, really really realize his full potential and uh i think he's great and it was like legitimately watching this a lot of people were freaking like they were watching it live and around me there were a lot of like no don't do it duke don't do it and it was like I was people bought it at people, the hotel mm -hmm. people bought it and then he backed up and fittingly enough it was april fools and he turns it around on schism and beats the crap out of him i believe he also got the pinfall on joe gacy so yeah that's um, good one good thing booking clear right now there have been some rumors in the news lately that fowler and reed have requested their releases um that is true however it has not been confirmed that they got them so a lot of people saying oh the grizzled young vets are free are free agents now that is not the case they have requested them 
but they have not been granted them yet. But the Grizzled Young Vets did take to Twitter and saying, regardless who we are, the Dyad, Schism, Grizzled Young Veterans, they're going to keep going with this. So I do hope they get their releases. It would suck to see Schism break up, considering how hot they are. But if Fowler and Reed are not happy, then they're not happy. And I hope they find happiness in another promotion. Well, and Gacy can always recruit some other blokes to be a sidekick. Yeah. So um, it was a fun little match at two and a half, maybe two and three quarters. It's not like yeah. it's not a blow away Tyler Bate match that you would expect because he's one of only eight participants here. But, uh, oh, man, you get into the main show and you want to talk about this big, gigantic mess here. Um, certainly is the inferior ladder match we got WrestleMania weekend, this time for the NXT Women's Championship. Roxanne Perez, that's right. Roxanne Perez is completely fine after fainting on NXT television. She's defending against Gigi Dolan, Zoe Stark, Lyra Valkyria, Indy Hartwell, and everybody's favorite, Tiffany Stratton. Um, Tiffany Stratton is a great gimmick. Um, it reminds me a lot of Eminem from 2005. Um, I think she's like modernizing it a little bit, and I think it's a really nice touch. Roxanne Perez is a true prodigy. I was yelling, call her up as she was making her entrance because she is that damn good at only 21. Um, she's got such a high ceiling. She really does. Yeah. Booker T's prodigy. She came from that's another cool thing about NXT and Booker T being the main color commentator is that Booker T runs a wrestling school in Texas called Reality of Wrestling. And WWE scours his school for a lot of talent. And Perez was Booker's star pupil. And when she won the NXT Women's title, Booker literally had tears in his eyes calling that match. It was pretty awesome. Um, this match was scary, I will say. Oh, this is God. what happens. Well, first of all, before I get into that, I'm sorry. I need to, like, backpedal a little. The build to this match was very weird. I don't know if this you don't was say. Babe. I don't know if this was a work or a shoot, but Perez fainted. And I know the, the fainting was a work, but there were a lot of rumors online that Perez, had, you know, could be injured. She's dealing with a lot of mental issues. So they were going to strip her of the NXT women's title mm -hmm. and put it on the line in here. And then you have another situation with the North American title, which I think was supposed to be a lot of match. They changed that into a fatal five way. And now Perez comes back at the very last second and says, she's going to defend her. So I don't know what the hell was going on there. So but I feel like if it was a shoot, Perez put management into a very awkward position of them having to put this match together for a vacant champion just for her to show up in a week <clears> before and say, I'm just kidding, guys. I'm fine. I can defend my title. I feel like yeah. that would ruffle some feathers. This was 100 percent of work. Um, and this is what I was uh, discussing earlier about what bugs me about Shawn Michaels booking. This is like a clear-cut recycling of an angle that he went through in 1996 when he held the World Wrestling Federation heavyweight title. Very different. Obviously, the most prestigious prize in the entire business, and he goes down with, like, fainting and what have you. But if Roxanne Perez, like, what you said about the mental health stuff, like, I know that for sure. Because Roxanne has said in interviews that she does suffer from anxiety. Um, mm -hmm. Not to get too personal. Yours truly does, too. So I for am sure. pulling so hard for Roxanne Perez to succeed. I think it's a very yeah. inspirational turn. It's real. It's out there. Um, yeah. And I do, yeah. you know, commend WWE for bringing such a real issue into the main spotlight. The only difference is back in 96, that's when kayfabe wasn't dead. And everyone really did think that Shawn Michaels fainted and we didn't know what the future of him was. In the day and age of the fourth wall is completely shattered, anything can be found in a click of a button on a computer screen or a smartphone. Um, we, we, everybody knew that this was a work, obviously. But yeah, I, I, it, it was just a very awkward build, in my opinion. But to the match, this was scary. This is oh, what God. happens when you put five, you know, five out of six very green women in the ring with a bunch of ladders that have never done them. I'm sorry. Let me take that back. Indy Hartwell and Gigi Dolan you know they know what they're doing all the other women in this match have never worked with ladders before and it was very scary to watch some of these spots um like i said Dumb. i love tiffany strut and i love uh a lot of the other women in this match oh but god who did she take that power bomb from who did she take Stratton that power bomb never, from yeah uh -huh. stratton's probably never touched a ladder in her life and i don't want to bury the lead too much there's a spot in this match that scared the living daylights out of me and she was not ready to take the spot Mm -mm, mm -mm. It was Indy Hartwell, actually, which is kind of ironic if you think about it. Indy picks Tiffany up for a spine buster. 
literally lands like you know lower back first on a ladder that's on the canvas and the back of her head hits another one and i'm like fucking hell guys <laughs> like if you've never worked with ladders before like i get it you're supposed to sell the brutality of everything but please be careful <laughs> please be careful i heard a rumor that triple h and Shawn michaels were gonna st start letting some of these nxt people work approved indie shows which i think oh. they should i think they absolutely should because you put them in, in an environment like this like i'm sorry this is not kitty hour anymore you got to start if you want to succeed you got to go out there and you know get your nails dirty break a nail here and there and i feel like this was a perfect example of that uh mm -hmm. let's get to that spot right so tiffany stratton gets shoved off a ladder and what she's trying to do is she's trying to do a swanton bomb onto the other participants I have never seen a more stiff swanton bomb before in my life because she falls like a wooden plank. She almost doesn't make the flip and she splats oh. onto the mat with barely anybody catching her. And that was just that not was good. Terrifying to watch considering what we saw the night prior at Ring of Honor Super Card of Honor. And that's from somebody who <laughs> is very experienced in these kind of spots. This was scary. And I was oh, scared, yeah. you know, she wasn't going to make it. God forbid she did, though. Yeah, fans were chanting, this is awesome around me. And I I kind of disagree with those fans. This match was very botchy. And it's very unfortunate that I have to say that about an exciting ladder match and everything like that. But I didn't really think it was that awesome. I thought it was good. I mean, I thought yeah, it was good. Thought... To be, like, the best I could say about it is it was good for what they were given, but not awesome. It, it was good. And I appreciate the ladies in this match that I've ever done this before that took some risks. Um, and I love a lot of the girls in this match. I love Perez. I love Gigi mm -hmm. Dolan. I love Stratton. I'm just as big of a fan of Stratton as everyone else. Just don't think she's ready to be taking these, you know, outlandishly unsafe spots that she's not ready to. And I love the person who won this match. And oh, a very, yeah. Very, not, very not... welcome surprise. Yeah, yeah. Very welcome surprise indeed. But a couple things we got to touch on. Zoe Stark just did not look good in this thing. I know she was in the Royal Rumble for a while last January, <sighs> but. Hey, see, here's the thing. Not and good. I know I'm going to keep harping on this. I want to like a lot of people in NXT. I want to like the Zoe Starks. I want to like the Von Wagners. But when you have no experience in a professional wrestling ring and you're just thrust on TV on this primetime slot and expected to get over, it's hard because Zoe Stark, I, 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 she has potential. She can mm -hmm. cut a good promo. She's good in the ring. But when you see what she's done since she's been on NXT, the awkward and prolonged partnership with EO Sky to the, you know, the heel turn that really didn't get over to... <laughs> a random tag did. team. What? Uh, yeah, Sorry. thank you. It's just like... I want to like these people, but I'm sorry. I can't really get behind a Zoe Stark more than I can get behind a, you know, okay. I guess this will describe it better to put it into better terms. Take old NXT, for example, and take the 2018, 2018 World Rumble, when we mm -hmm. saw Andrade, Johnny Gargano, Adam Cole in there. I popped harder for that than I do seeing a Zoe Stark in this past year for a Rumble. You know what I mean? You yeah, know, it's a bigger name, and I know Roxanne I Perez was in that match too. And like, you yeah. know, if anybody deserved the twenty-five minute treatment, it was her. She looked really good it, in this it, match, it, but it's like I've gotten into a lot of arguments with people online about this aspect of NXT, and people said, "Oh, Triple H turned NXT into a glorified indie show." Well, you know what? I liked the glorified indie show. Sue me. It I was like, like a Apple. it was like a glorified cleaner version of what ECW was back in the day. You know, yeah, you know, and that's what I think is missing with a lot of these people. But, you know, back back. I don't want to derive too much from. This, no, but no, we got to address. Um, we got to address Gigi Dolan real quick. The elephant mm -hmm. in the room. Toxic attraction is no more. And I'm sure no. my buddy Doug is furious about this. Uh, shout out to you if you're watching this, my friend. But Gigi Dolan is climbing the ladder. An injured JC Jane comes out, knocks Gigi off the ladder but wait, weren't they tag team partners last time we were talking about them? Um, Jay was released. And Dolan, yeah, they, they lost the tag team titles. Mandy Rose got released, which I'm still very stern about. Um, and then in yep. one of the better aspects of NXT, they recreate the barbershop window incident between the Rockers and complete with Jane absolutely just 
bashing Dolan's head through Bailey's ding dong hello door and delivering one of the stiffest kicks I've ever seen in my life. Like, yep. I know that was planned, and Dolan's not mad about it at all. But Jesus Christ! Once what again, a fucking kick from Jane. Once again, another example of Shawn Michaels recycling old gimmicks that worked for him in the past. But anyway, Gigi Dolan's out of the equation after that stiff swanton from Stratton. It's just Indy Hartwell all alone in the ring. And she is doing like the slow climb thing and everything like that. Jacob, who's sitting next to me over here, is like, yeah. climb, you idiot. You're climbing so slow. Well, like he wants her to win this match so bad. She had a, yeah, she had a bum ankle. I feel like that was the gimmick uh, she was going with. But I'm going to be in the minority. I didn't, was not a fan of this next part. She has a bum ass ankle and she can't reach. So who appears but Dexter Loomis, her husband, which I do appreciate them keeping up with that storyline. Dexter Loomis helps Indy Hartwell up the ladder and helps her win the NXT Women's Championship. I love that Hartwell won the title. That was a very, very, very welcome surprise. She's earned it. But I, I, I didn't see the need for Loomis to, to come in and help. That's what I think. Uh, <laughs> I bet a lot of you were wondering if I was frozen there. But yeah, Dexter. Very Loomis, random. Very gotta, random ending in my opinion. He got a big pop in that building, though, because they were like, it's oh, yeah. Index is back, and Vic Joseph on a play-by-play -play is just freaking the F out. Uh, Dexter helps his wife up the ladder, and she wins the NXT Women's title, and she gets a loud You Deserve It chant from people because she has been she's been thriving on this brand since the days of the way. Um, <laughs> I still remember back during NXT Halloween Havoc when she debuted literally under a ghost face mask. To help uh, Johnny Gargano, I believe. I don't remember. Way back the NXT North American Championship from Damian from Priest, Priest and um, Leon yeah. Ruff. Yeah. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, how I think far they've gone. Why but... it got such a big pop is that Index is literally the very last remains of NXT Black and Gold we have left. So we're still clinging mm -hmm. on to that shit. Um, mm -hmm. Very happy for her. Well, she earned this. I don't like that a lot of people are saying, oh, she's just holding on to the title so she can drop it to Stratton. There's a note, let Indy Hartwell have her fucking moment. Um, she has earned it. I don't care if she's just going to drop it to Stratton or Jade or Cora Jade. Um, let her have this moment. I think it's fucking awesome. And if she is going to drop it soon, they need to move her ass up to the main roster because they could use a talent like Indy Hartwell. Because Loomis, um, Candice, and Gargano are all up there and they're waiting and for theory. Indy to join them. So And Theory. And Theory, yeah, thank yeah. you, yeah. No, Theory's not um, affiliated with Gargano anymore, but they're always going to be attached at the hip, aren't they? I'm going to give this ladder match three stars. I do appreciate the work they put in here. It wasn't the best ladder match, but it still got some loud reactions from what you told me. And mm -hmm. the, the ending was very, it was a very feel-good ending. And we're going to get a better feel-good moment. So we're, this isn't the last time we're going to be talking about the win. Yeah, I'm going to go three as well. It was a fun enough ladder match. I couldn't help but notice how botchy it was, unfortunately. But definitely had a, had a winner I wasn't expecting because Indy Hartwell's entrance was given to us live before Stand and Deliver went on the air. Wasn't shown to people on the pay-per-view feed. So I was like, oh, poor Indy. She's just in this to lose. We were only shown Tiffany Stratton, Lyra Valkyria, who was really good in the match as well, and Roxanne Perez herself. Didn't didn't think Indy stood a chance, but there she was. There she was. She won. So anyway, up next. next up next is a triple threat match for the NXT Tag Team Championships. You're going to have to help me out because I'm blanking hard. It's the Gallus Boys defending against Pretty Deadly and... Pretty Deadly were the hosts. So, so it was Gallus. Oh, it was... They weren't even the match. Yeah, it was Gallus, the Creed Brothers, and Tony D'Angelo and Stax. Thank um, you. And now yeah. I realize why I blanked so hard. I don't give a fuck about anybody in this match other than the Dallas boys. <laughs> oh, you don't Let give a shit about the Creeds? I don't. Let me get really? into my rant right now. All right. I don't get it. I don't get it. I do not get it. I'm going to get a lot of shit for this, but I do not care. The Creed brothers are like if you just got the flattest soda that's been sitting in your back cabinet for months and months and months. I know I'm sounding a little harsh. Ooh. Sure, they're good wrestlers, but you know what? Anybody can be a good wrestler. Their names are Brutus and Julius. Wow. What's wrong with Julius? Me? I love Julius. <laughs> but Julius is my dog, for anybody wondering. 
yeah it, it, could they be more on the nose with that fucking reference and it's just i know i don't get it i've been watching nxt like i said for some reason they have they're big on julius in particular and i don't fucking get it i, well, I don't they're gonna have I, brutus I turn on him they're gonna have brutus turn on him obviously and you know but... what i don't fucking care i don't nah. like i and then tony d'angelo and stacks are a random tag team in my opinion it's just the mafia and his assistant the gallows boys however are fucking awesome and i love that they're on nxt this yes. is wolfgang and mark coffee the, the nxt tag team champions it does irk me a little that the coffee brothers aren't the tag team champions but that's just a small little nitpick yeah um i wasn't a huge fan of this match um they tried it this was tower of doom spot where brutus has I think D'Angelo on his shoulders and Julius goes for a cannonball, but he totally fucking whips it. No, no. Cut. What happened was is uh, D'Angelo was on Brutus's shoulders. Julius mm -hmm. was on Tony's shoulders. And then fucking, right. uh, I think uh, it was either D'Angelo or uh, Mark Coffey. I might be getting it mixed up, but somebody jumped on that big gigantic tower point <laughs> being, and I'm like, it. that was a dumb spot. I mean, it's like, <laughs> it's showing you how strong the creeds are, but again, I can't help but sit here and agree with you. I mean, I was fine with the creeds, but now, now that you say that, I'm like, this team and the Diamond Mine without Roderick Strong, this is like if you took American Alpha from NXT Black and Gold, a great tag team, and you took all the personality out of them. Thank you. Thank okay. you. It's just that if you're a fan of the Creed Brothers, that's totally fine. You like the whole Diamond Mine, I get it, but it's not for me. I don't get it. I don't get why they're so over. I feel like they're just rushing so much of these guys and they're so rushing for, I've heard Vic Joseph say that Julius Creed's going to be a world champion one day. I was like, why? No. Why? And they put him like into this big uh, feud with um, what's his face with uh, Gable Stevenson's brother. I forget what his name. Oh, uh, Damon Kemp. Um, they put him into a big feud that was on uh, Vengeance Day, That's I believe. Stevenson's brother? Last year. Yeah, it is. It is, and he's thriving more than Gable Stevens is. Any, anywho, <laughs> shows um, you how much I've been paying attention. Yeah, so and shows, but I, yeah, I really have nothing to say about this match. It was, yeah. it was there live. Um, this was very much a cool down match until the finish, mm -hmm. and I immediately recognized who interfered for the Gallus boys. It's a returning Joe Coffee, who a lot of people consider to be the leader of the Gallus trio. That is why Joe is not a champion with his brother. Because a lot of people see Joe as the big money star. And that sucks. That sucks for Mark. But it's like Joe Coffey was the one challenging for the NXT UK title when Pete Dunne had that long run. Yeah, it wasn't Mark. So let me, since I have really have nothing to say about this match, let me just say the Gallus boys have been a faction since day fucking one of NXT UK. And they ran that show. It was, mm -hmm. with the exception of like, you know, Pete Dunne and Gunter and, 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 you know, Tyler Bate, they were my favorite part of NXT UK. And to see them, I, that's why I was so happy to see them debut on the regular NXT roster. These guys are awesome. I don't want to see them drop the titles anytime soon. No. Um, I would love to see Joe Coffey face Carmelo Hayes for the NXT title. I think I think that would be a banger. Ooh. Uh, before Ilya Dragunov, before Ilya Dragunov, I wanted Joe Coffey to be the one to take the NXT UK title off from Gunter. That's how much I like these guys. Really? Oh, you want yeah. Joe Coffey to take the IC title from Gunter? No, 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 no. Back when uh, he was uh, NXT UK. Oh, 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 oh. I, I see what you're saying. Okay. To take the NXT UK title off of him before Ilya Dragunov. And after they had that banger of a fucking match in 2020. My favorite match with no crowd. Right there. Gunter yep. and Ilya Dragunov. But I digress. I'm getting totally off topic. That's how much I don't have to say about this match. Um, <laughs> Gallus retained uh, two and a half stars. It, it, it was there. Yeah. I mean, it was uh, certainly passable. I would say two and a half, maybe two and three quarters just for the finish. And I really enjoyed seeing Joe Coffey come into the uh, come into the fold again, rather. But uh, yeah. it was, you know, um, it was fine. Tony D'Angelo yeah. was surprisingly over with some of those people. And they liked the Don thing. And I'm like, well... I can I can see this being a gimmick that could pan out on the main roster because I could see D'Angelo once he's called up being like another version of Baron Corbin, you know, where he comes yeah. in the serviceable hand. I don't think D'Angelo is ever going to win any world titles or anything like that. But no, um, and here's my thing about D'Angelo, and I mean he's all right, but he is the prime of example 
of just the gimmick heavy, you know, feel to NXT right now. It's like, yeah, he's a gimmick. He's literally a gimmick. And remember, uh, I really don't care for him when he's on TV. Remember last year when he sent Tommaso Ciampa packing at the same event? He did. Remember that? And the crowd <laughs> went mild. They yeah. did absolutely nothing with D'Angelo. The crowd but just digress, wanted to see um, Champa win I, last year, but no. <laughs> you know what, man? We're past the bad shit. Everything after this is pretty fucking good. Yeah, yeah. Up next is actually my sleeper pick for match of the night, and maybe even overall match of the night for me. It is a fatal five-way match for the NXT North American Championship. Wesley gets to choose four challengers to come up to him, and he is taking on... Ilya Dragunov, who is very much over in the Staples Center with everybody doing the con weird conducting arm thing that he does. Uh, JD McDonough, the former Jordan Devlin. Axiom, who won a battle royal to get into this. And the debuting Dragon Lee. Very cool to see Dragon Lee's debut in NXT live uh, in ring-wise. Here's my thing. They were presenting Dragon Lee almost like they were presenting Ricochet at TakeOver New Orleans. They were presenting this like a humongous deal. I don't know. I don't know, man. I mean, I, I liked what Dragon Lee was doing in this match, but I don't think he was as big of a deal as Ricochet was. I think somebody I mean, stole the show. I'm happy that Dragon Lee is in NXT because Triple H is finally getting his hand back into the pot of, I'm going to sign these guys. We're going to start getting some big indie names back into NXT. We're going to start seeing people in the crowd again that you wouldn't think, you know, he's getting back. And, you know, and with William Regal back at the helm, you know, he's going to start talent scouting again. Um, I, I will agree with you. I feel like he hasn't gotten over. I feel like, look, he's a star. He's been a star in Mexico. He's Roosh's brother. We've seen him on AEW. But I definitely feel like it's going to be a transition for him to get familiarized with the casual wrestling crowd. Because, you mm -hmm. know, sure, he's been on national television before. He was on AEW a couple of times. I'm sorry, but AEW really isn't the casual wrestling crowd. That's the Mark crowd. That's the hardcore crowd. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely feel like there's going to be a warming period with him. Remember, this is a couple weeks after Stand and Deliver, and he's doing <clears> some good stuff on TV right now. Um, oh, yeah. He his fucking entrance, and that made me so upset. I know you couldn't see it from your end, but like they were trying to do a big video thing, and it froze, and all of a sudden you just saw Dragon Lee. There were two map superstars in this match, and I think the other one got even more over than Dragon Lee. And that's Dude, Axiom, Axiom was the MVP of this match. Um, I, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. It was great as a five-way. Imagine if this was a six-pack challenge, and you throw someone like, I don't know, you throw someone like A-Kid in there to make it a little bit more athletic. Where the, Where's God he been? You. Where's he been? Um, For those who don't know, A-Kid <laughs> is under the mask of Axiom. <laughs> Um, Axiom made me he nervous is. when he first debuted because he had such an awesome gimmick and presentation, but I feel like he suffers under Rey Mysterio syndrome because look at all the mass superstars that came after Rey Mysterio, the, the, the Ultimo Dragons, the Steam Gatas, the Axioms, it's hard for them to measure up and there's never going to be another Rey Mysterio, but I feel like this was finally, he was finally put in a position where he's getting over and that's awesome because Ever since a kid has took over the Axiom, you know, persona, his offense has been so fun to watch. It's been on the level of a ricochet. It's been on the level of a, of a, you know, a, a commander or something like that. So he was yeah. the MVP of this match. But let me, and you know, since so damn good. NXT reviews, let me gush over Wes fucking Lee. Yo, Wes Lee he was awesome. Was dealt a terrible hand when Nash Carter got released from NXT last year. And they played it up perfectly with his storytelling and his promos where he was saying he's not going to let this keep him down. Yeah, sure. I still think MSK should be a thing in NXT, but now he's on his own. And ever since I saw Wesley as Desmond Xavier in 2015 in TNA, I knew this kid was a star. And the fact that, they, that Shawn Michaels has put his trust into Wesley to be, you know, the North American champion. He has proven so many people wrong, and that makes me so happy. He's defending uh -huh. his title on the weekly. He's a giant slayer. He's he is. Von Wagner, and did you fucking see what he did to Dijak's finger? At yeah. The same, at, uh, same Vengeance, Vengeance Day. Day. Yeah. 
fuck oh with, i saw the that fuck with Les Lee. <laughs> yeah it's uh it's tough to keep that rascal down that's for sure but uh yeah, it, he was he's so endearing and i love him and I'm so, so out of this world in this match too is. so out of this world um everybody was out of this world i think it was a perfect blend of the high flying with your wesley your dragon lee and your axiom but then you have the stiffness of mcdonough and Ilya freaking dragonov do not sleep on Ilya Dragunov, please. No. I mean, I know a lot of people were awesome. like, I know a lot of people have forgotten about him dethroning Gunther for the NXT UK title a couple of years ago. But I, I've been sitting there on Twitter the past couple of days, and if Sheamus is not the guy to beat Gunther for the IC title, let me pitch you Ilya Dragunov, a ghost of Gunther's past. So that's an idea. That's an idea. Let me do you one better. J.D. McDonough, he's more than ready for the main roster. Like, mm -hmm. he's starting to get repetitive on NXT. It's like, unless they're going to put a title on him, move him up. Because I swear, if he interrupts the NXT champion one more time to challenge <laughs> him for the title, I'm going to lose my fucking, I'm going to lose my marbles. How many like, NXT title shots does this guy need? Exactly. So either put the title on him or move him up. Because yeah. he's another solid hand. He's an amazing heel. He is falling under that gimmick syndrome where he just has this weird gimmick where he just likes explaining how he likes to hurt people. And that's why I'm just like, Joe Michaels, I love you, man. But not everybody needs a fucking gimmick. He's let the Irish. Let him be him. He's yeah, the, let him be the Irish. I mean, do you need, you know? Yeah, exactly. Ever see him on 205 Live before that show went under when he was a Cruiserweight champion? Perfectly fine. You know, he was presented yeah. as the Irish ace. He, he was Jordan Devlin at the time, obviously, but... Like, he doesn't need a freaking gimmick, you know? And he, yeah. he looked really good in this match. He had a couple high-flying moments. Um, let's see, some great freaking sequences between Axiom and Wes Lee where they just fly through the air and it's like a stalemate. Oh, like, it cannot be overstated how much this live crowd loved this. And they yes. were just sitting there. They were on the edge of their seats. They were chanting, fight forever. There were so many near falls and like, it's not um, like begging for a finish or they were rooting for somebody. They just wanted to see a great match. And that's what we I got. Can I give a shout out to Dragunov selling? <laughs> it's fucking amazing. Mm -hmm. There was one spot I can't quite remember, but he hits a move and then he goes for the pin and then Wesley comes out of nowhere and nails him with a fucking cartwheel kick. And he sold that like nobody else ever could. Also, I love Dragunov's finisher, the Torpedo Moscow. Give yeah, a better name for a finisher. Give me a better name for a finisher. Oh, wait, you can't. That is the best name for a finisher I've ever heard. The Crossroads, the Disaster Kick. You have the F5. Yeah, I don't know. Beautiful Disaster. <laughs> eh, Still call fine. It that, damn it. Fine. Axiom again, showing why he's the MVP of this match. A double Northern Light suplex on JD and Ilya. Axiom is uh, Axiom's the real deal, guys. I, I hate glad they gave him the spotlight. I hate that someone with a math gimmick is so over because he puts the ankle lock on somebody. And I look at Jacob and I'm like, you know what that move is called, right? Because he's a math guy. That's the angle lock. <laughs> There's some geometry humor for you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not. Uh, Axiom with a plunge to the outside. Wesley with that twisting splash onto everybody on the outside. Wesley's the real deal. I I can honestly sit here and pitch. Why not build up Wesley for the NXT title? Why not? He's a big enough I star. Reason why not to? Yeah, give He's Carmelo awesome. Hayes a long run. Maybe last to the end of the year. Wesley will totally be ready to knock him off. Absolutely. And for the love of God, NXT. I swear to God. If you get Dragunov or Lee or another over baby face and you book them in a situation where we want them to win and then they fucking lose, I'm going to lose my goddamn marbles. Because we saw not one, not two, but three instances in one weekend. And we were live for every single one of them. The four, if you count the Danielson one at Revolution. Swear to God. Yeah. I'm, if there's one trope, I want to die right now. We're Stop clearly, one. clearly it's sick of it. Instant gratification. Mm -mm. <laughs> it's it really not isn't instant gratification. Clearly, it isn't. Uh, oh, here's a fun finisher name: Axiom with a golden ratio kick. 
Um, I see him hit a golden ratio kick okay. on Wesley in midair as Wesley yeah. was for a flip. And I'm like, God, that was awesome. That was so awesome. Um, I mean, just very close near falls as you get towards the end of this. Dragon Lee with some sit-out power bombs. Uh, just stiff strikes everywhere. If you have Ilya Dragunov in a match, of course you're going to have stiffness. I mean, I don't know if anybody's going to match him when it comes to stiffness, but, you know, <laughs> unless your name is Gunther, you are not going to match Ilya Dragunov when it comes to uh, also, how bashing people. how crazy is it? that Axiom was more over than Dragon Lee in this match. How crazy. I'm telling you guys, they were presenting Dragon Lee like a big deal, like a new Ricochet-style signing, and uh, Axiom completely overshadows him in this match. Like, I remembered a lot more of Axiom's performance than I did of Dragon Lee. I'm just being honest. But yeah. um, Wes Lee hits a cardiac kick on Ilya Dragunov, and surprisingly... Dragonov is the one who's pinned, and I am certainly not upset that Wes Lee retained here. I was cool with anybody winning, in all honesty, but I was kind of surprised because Wes Lee, I believe, won this title back in October at Halloween Havoc in that ladder match. But, hey, if they want to give him a longer run, if they want to have him run with it until, like, in your house or whatever the summer show is, I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. Go ahead. Me too. Wes Lee is awesome. I'm glad he retained, and I want him to keep going. Um, mm -hmm. He is proving to be, you know, he started off as a singles guy and then he became an awesome tag team guy. And now he's back to proving why he's the real, he's the real deal. I'm going to give this, Ooh, do I want to give it, I'm going to give it four and a quarter stars. This was so much fun. I'm going four and a half. I'm going four and a half. You know, honestly, if Dragon Lee wasn't overshadowed so much on his debut, this could have easily gotten five with okay. everybody yeah. showing up. But this was excellent. Yeah, I think everybody now, put their role to perfection. On to the best story on this show, and a, the best example of long-term storytelling. Uh, it is Johnny Gargano versus Grayson Waller in an unsanctioned match. So this had a very fun build. If you want to go into that, how did we get here? Mm -hmm. uh, back last year, Gargano announced that he was leading NXT because he was about to give birth to um, his first son. Well, Candice Sonia. was. Candace, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Candice. So, Quill is uh Quill is indeed a boy. <laughs> okay. Um. Unless he decides otherwise, or on his life, we support that. Shit. Of, of course. Um, of course. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> uh, Gargano, as he was about to leave, was ambushed by Grayson Waller, who used Gargano to make a statement in NXT. And lately, Waller has been mad at one Shawn Michaels for the decisions he's been making for Waller not winning the NXT title. So Waller called out Shawn Michaels. That raised a lot of eyebrows. I didn't want to see Michaels get back in the ring. So no. we were wondering who was Michaels' surrogate going to be to face Waller. And it ended up being Gargano. Gargano's not doing a lot on the main roster right now. So it was really cool to bring him back to finish up this storyline. They took it a step further, though, when Waller showed up to Gargano's house and attacked him in front of Candice, in front of Quill, to up that ante. And then this is when we really saw that dark side of Gargano come back out because he said mm -hmm. he wanted Waller in an unsanctioned match. Johnny Takeover is back. He's ready to take on Waller. And this was this was a really good match. Yeah, thank you for... Unbelievable. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, thank you for really uh, getting into that background. Um, but let me tell you a bit of a personal story um, before we uh, really get into this match deeper. Much like Tomas, I was actually not planning on going to the show. I really wasn't. I didn't think I could do it. I didn't think I could wake up as early in the morning as I did to uh, go to the Staples Center didn't think I could uh, get an Uber to do so, but I saw that promo on the Waller effect where Johnny Gargano came out and immediately after the show was over, it was roadblock. I texted my buddy Jacob, who is on the trip with us, and you'll see him tomorrow. And I told him, I'm in for Stand and Deliver because it was either this or it was meeting Brian Danielson at WrestleCon in the morning. And I can meet Brian Danielson at any time. I cannot call myself a hardcore Johnny Gargano fan that I am if I did not make the effort to go and see his final NXT match. Really could not have done that if I didn't at least make an effort. And that's what I did. And this was my favorite match on the show. It's, it's his final you NXT know. match. Fuck off. You don't know that. You don't know that. You don't know that. <laughs> yes, I do. Listen. Yes, I do. He is on the main roster. You said call Indy up earlier. So <laughs> there's no uh... John NXT. No reason. I don't care about uh, the draft. Tell that to Apollo no Crews. Tell that to Apollo Crews. 
Yeah, I don't get that's a different story. That's a different story. <laughs> but, um, Anywho, this yeah. was a really good match, and this was the best told story. This had the most like most personal bad blood behind it. Um, I hate to be that guy, but it's probably on the lower ladder when it comes to Johnny Takeover matches. Oh, for sure um, it is. Just because for sure you know, it it's is. not the same environment, it's not the same NXT. I hate to keep, you know bashing that point into the ground, but it was still very good. And I well, think this is the best performance we've seen from Johnny Gargano since he's came back, with the exception of Elimination Chamber. Chad Gable, Elimination Chamber, you know. But this is the true Johnny Gargano that we've been waiting for. It's the Johnny wrestling that we know and love. And I hate to bring this point up. If you're going to go with those points, not the same NXT or whatever, let's take it a step further why this is a lower echelon Johnny Gargano takeover match. Not the same opponent either. Like, yeah. we remember his clinics that he put on with Adam Cole. We remember his clinic he put on with Ricochet in Phoenix. We remember the bad blood that he had with Tommaso Ciampa and all the classics they had. To go from them to Grayson Waller? I don't know. That, not not a knock on Grayson Waller at all. Waller. Yeah. I really like Waller, but... I do too! His gimmick... You know, I, I hate to say this, even though I just said he's another Miz. He's another Austin Theory. He's another he's he's a douchebag heel and he's really good at getting heat. But I feel like there, it, it was a trope. It, it, it's a trope now. <laughs> and I feel like he's just another well, step in that trope. Let's take it a step further. Then if you look at a lot of Waller's offense in this match, a lot of it reminded me exactly of Austin Theory which is kind of haunting when you fast forward a few hours later in my day and Austin Theory is opening WrestleMania using a lot of the same moves that Waller was using. Um, Waller, you know, I feel rolling like... DDT, the rolling stunner. He does a nice little Oklahoma roll over a table on the outside. But So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring this back when it comes to trope things with this douchebag heel thing. Back in like 2017, 2018, me and my bro, Sean, when we used to work together, we talked about a lot of like the little things about wrestling. What's our favorite entrances? What's our favorite offense? What's our favorite? And this is when I realized this was the era of big guys doing running sentons. Samoa Joe, Bray Wyatt, um, who's another guy, <clears throat> you know, kind of like that. And we saw about Bam Bam Bigelow. Event. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was just something that just came up. And I feel like I had a couple other examples. I just can't think of them right now. But I feel like it's like that, you know, this has become a trope. The big man doing the running senton. And now it's like the douchebag heel who can get the best heat. Like everyone's trying to be the new MJF. And it's like, so nothing against Waller. It's just no. it's an act I've seen before. And he's another one of those Vince McMahon guys didn't have any experience in professional wrestling. And now he's being thrust in NXT. I'm tired of saying that, but it's the case. But yeah. uh, I think him and Gargano had a really good match. Um, it's not on the level of Adam Cole. It's not on the level of Champa, but mm -mm. I feel like they still pulled out a really fine. And you know how I feel about unsanctioned matches. If it's so unsanctioned, then why did they get entrance music? Why is there a referee out there? Why are they blocking? <laughs> now, you know what a true unsanctioned <laughs> fight is? Meet my ass out in the parking lot and let's fist fight to the death. That's an unsanctioned fight. <laughs> it's the ending of Rocky Five. You know? <laughs> We're gonna oh, I'm sorry. I've never say seen Rocky Five. Oh, you've never seen Rocky Five? Yeah, you're not missing much, buddy. But uh, yeah, so this I match think you was. The joke by you. <laughs> no, no, no I get it. Okay. I get it. I get it. Of, of course, I do. I just chose not to acknowledge that you reference CM Punk on this pod. But uh, <laughs> anyway, um, Candice LeRae is sitting at ringside with little baby Quill, and uh, it it kind of warms my heart to see Johnny Gargano go up to. Uh, his wife and his uh, young son in the front row. And I was like, that's adorable. That is so adorable. Yeah. The difference is Gargano didn't fucking lose. Gargano didn't lose when he was greeting his little boy. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm so sick of that. I'm so sick of people asking me, hey, how do you feel about the ending of WrestleMania? You know how I feel. You know how I feel. I'm sorry. But I, I just had to had to get get that off my chest <laughs> while yeah. I still, it was so fresh in my mind um, are you upset gargano, that cody rose lost the main event for WrestleMania? The gargano break. made his entrance and gwaller tries to attack him from behind and gargano sees it coming hits a super kick and you have a tope there's points 
throughout this match where Waller was arguing so aggressively with Vic Joseph. Because he knows that Vic Joseph and Johnny Gargano were the closest of friends in real life. They watch Cleveland Browns games together. They hang out a lot outside of WWE. So they know they're t- Waller knows they're tight. And he was using that to his advantage. I don't know if that was to get cheap heat, per se. Um, to sh- give a little That's bit more. That's storytelling, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I agree. And Vic Joseph's great. Very underrated uh, play-by-play guy, in my opinion. But uh, Gargano pulls out a table from underneath the ring. <laughs> this made me laugh so hard live. So there were a lot of chants throughout this. There, were, there was even a dueling Grayson Waller-Johnny wrestling chant. Obviously, it's going to be 95 to 5 in Gargano. There were people in the section above me that were chanting Grayson Waller, and as the chant started to die down, uh, they're still chanting Grayson Waller. I'm still chanting Johnny Wrestling. They chant Grayson Waller, and I'm like, I can do this all night. I can do this all night. Let's keep going. But um, Johnny Gargano pulls out a fucking table because the crowd was wanting tables. It's a street fight. And the crowd immediately starts chanting, Johnny Tables. <laughs> and I'm like, that's creative. That's great. That is creative as all hell. But I, I think Johnny liked that chant. I don't know how much sense it made, but I mean, <laughs> I enjoyed the chant. Uh, there was a, uh, oh man, this match got really stiff. Candice LeRae got involved. Uh, Johnny Gargano had a kendo stick and Waller's back and his torso. Oh my God, the welts. Like, this is the second straight WrestleMania weekend where Grayson Waller has been in a hardcore-style match. He's taking a lot of freaking punishment, man. I mean, say what you want about his yeah, in-ring ability. Waller... Say what you want yeah, about his gimmick. Waller gets credit. Credit yeah. where it's due. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's not afraid to put his body on the line. So, I am... I respect him for that. Uh, Candice LeRae jumps the guardrail, um, I guess, because she's an employee and she can do that. Uh, she starts wailing on Grayson Waller with the kendo stick. Um, and uh, there was a point yeah, where Waller, Waller turns around. Yeah, Waller turns around, grabs the stick, and just goes, you just made the biggest mistake of your life. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, the, turn it up, Waller. Turn it up. Mm-hmm, <laughs> that mm-hmm. was like probably the point where I go, you fucking scumbag. Don't you dare lay a finger on her. Don't. Uh, well, I mean, if you've seen Candice LeRae in PWG, she could certainly hold her own against the dudes. Certainly can oh, yeah. hold her own against the dudes. Her husband included. Um, but Gargano, <laughs> um, there was, uh, you know, a kick out of a one final beat, and Vic Joseph was just despondent over that. Um, there was a uh, Gargano escape attempt, but uh, Waller puts his fingers in Gargano's eyes because, remember, it's unsanctioned. Anything goes. You know, but <laughs> Grayson Waller. Yeah, <laughs> Grayson Waller, it, like a really cool move that he does is a coast to coast on Johnny uh, with a trash can over his head. Really cool. I'll give him that much. Gargano power bombs Grayson Waller through the announce table at ringside. Locks on the Gargano escape one more time. Waller taps out like a little bitch. Get out of here. Gargano is celebrating his final NXT victory. Four stars, I think. Uh, definitely yeah, lower. It was fun. Yeah, yeah. It was it was a fun street fight, that's for sure. And it was, uh, you know, I felt very privileged to be there for Johnny and everything, and to cheer him on. You know, Gargano was definitely the attraction to sell more tickets at this show. I feel um, it was, you know, the personal. I'm living proof. Yeah, exactly. The personal bad blood feud that Gargano is known for these NXT takeovers. You know. Yeah. I said it once, I'll say it again. It's not the same, but I still think they put on a really good match here. And I'll give it four stars, too. It's not my match of the night, but really, yeah. really, really fun to watch. Might I add, might I add, by the way, Gargano was my motivation to buy a ticket. It was a bargain. Only $40 for me to get into Stand and Deliver with a really good seat. So Pretty good, Gar- yeah. yeah. Gargano is celebrating with Candice LeRae, and that is when the way comes and reforms on the stage, minus Austin Theory, obviously. Candice LeRae marks the fuck out for Indy Hartwell when she sees her. It's so freaking cool. And uh, Johnny hugs Dexter, and Dexter, of course, does the... Yep. Doesn't say a damn word. Getting approval from his father-in-law. <laughs> You son of a bitch. Indy Hartwell is not his daughter. Yes, she Hartwell is. is. I support like Indy Austin wrestling. Theory yeah, I know. Son. 
Gargano and Theory were the definition of don't ever talk to me or my son ever again. <laughs> I fucking uh, love Austin Theory in the way, but uh, why why can't that happen again? Why can't the way just reflow fully on the main roster? I miss when Dexter Loomis kidnapped him and he said that, oh, he gave me cereal. We watched cartoons all morning. It was I, I miss that shit. I miss that theory. <laughs> I miss the old NXT, damn it. <laughs> oh, I miss that Austin theory for sure. But, uh, Fucking hell. okay. One so, day, uh, one day I'm going to go back and just watch every single episode of NXT from 2014 to 2021 and just <clears throat> hopefully not get depressed. <laughs> every single, uh, takeover special that we were, uh, treated yeah. to through the years. Yeah. So, up next, we have uh, Fallon Henley and Kiana James defending the NXT Women's titles against Kaylee Ray and Isla Dawn. Um, you want to talk about two Power random Fire tag teams? Isla Dawn is not a bad gimmick. It's, and it's a good tag team. <laughs> it's a random fucking tag team. I don't know what you're talking about. I'll be honest. I didn't oh really God. care about this match. Didn't really care, NXT unfortunately. 2.0 incarnate. Um, I will give this. I really like. Uh, Brooks Jensen and Josh Briggs. I think they were a very fun tag team. I think they're a very fun tag team with a lot of energy that can get brought up to the main roster and have a, you know, like a, like a, I don't want to say Alpha Academy, but they're fun. They'd be fun baby faces. The kids will love them. I love the, I, 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 in particular, I love Briggs. I love mm -hmm. his, uh, watching him go through this awkward dating gimmick you know, I can relate to that very hard. So he's a he's a guy that he's easy to root for. Um, what I feel about this whole storyline with Kiana James and the whole, oh, is he cheating on her? I don't really care for it, if I'm being perfectly honest. But one thing that just, I can't, it, it won't stop bugging me. I know they were in like a match where if Kiana James won, she won the bar. And this is why this tag team kind of came apart. But let me tell you something. If you don't like your tag team partner, stop fucking teaming with them. Moral of the story. Moral of the Fallon story, Henry my friends. does not like Keanu James, so stop teaming with her. <clears throat> if you have a toxic friend in your life, just get rid of them. That's just yeah. life 101. And obviously, yeah. uh, Keanu James and Fallon Henley have a very toxic friendship. These two are going to split split ways. You know, it was very obvious that Fire and Dawn were winning these titles. This crowd didn't really care about this match, and it's no. unfortunate because Fire did take a uh, a nasty fall to the outside at one point, but she turned out to be okay, thankfully. Um, I don't even fucking remember the finish. I think I went to the bathroom during this match. But, oh, uh, Briggs. Um, br okay, so the whole thing was uh, James wanted Henley to cheat using... I think a lead pipe or something or no, it was like her bag or something. And she didn't want to. And then Briggs came down, something happened. And then Dawn and Fire won. Um, two and a quarter. Sure. I don't even remember this. Yeah, for me, it existed. Um, two and a quarter. If there's one thing I will give NXT over the main roster is that they do a hell of a better job with their NXT, with the women's tag team division to an extent. Um, James and Henley is a fucking random tag team, and I'm kind of over this. <laughs> so story. is Fire and Dawn. Kaylee Ray is a the, NXT Women's Champion. <laughs> at least Alba Fire and Isla Dawn can have. It can be fun because of the gimmick. Um, but yeah, whatever. This is kind Change of change her name this back. Is <laughs> this is the aspect of NXT that just makes me sad. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it. Uh, okay. So uh, thankfully, we have main something event uh, something eventful to talk about for this main event. Um, it is Carmelo Hayes defending his NXT championship against Braun Brecker. Okay, so um, no, 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 no. Carmelo Hayes injured. is the challenger. Remember, Carmelo Hayes is the challenger going into this. Wait, he said he was defending. Did I just say he was defending? Yeah. My bad. Challenging <laughs> Braun Brecker for the NXT championship. The story here is very simple. Uh, Hayes <laughs> has been the MVP of NXT ever since its 2.0 incarnation, and Braun Breaker has been the dominant champion ever since. Braun Breaker. Braun Breaker. Braun Breaker. <laughs> um, but here's the thing. The fans are getting kind of tired of Breaker. They're starting to boo Yeah. Him. So, mm -hmm. Oh, boy. That's so... a little surprising because I've been a Braun Breaker defender, and I feel like a lot of people have been. 
coming to his defense. But I guess when you're just tired of something, you're tired of something. And, okay. Uh, let me get this let out me... of Ray right now. Fuck his dad. His dad's a piece of shit. And I hope he gets his ass kicked in an alleyway. That was going to be my next point. Um, a couple stories that I'd like to tell about Braun Breaker. Um, this is a guy who I've refused to call by his given name on TV just because I thought it was so stupid. Why does he have so many K's in his name? But then I hear he about the... Things. Yeah, but he breaks things. Yeah, I know. And it's also partially because Bronson Recksteiner probably doesn't want to go off of his uh, family lineage to, uh, you know, carve his path in the business. And you know what? More power to him for that. His dad's a piece of shit. So since <laughs> since his dad did what he did at WrestleCon, like, I'm like, fine. Keep the name. Keep the name. Uh, he pro- you probably didn't want the name anyway, I'm but... Disgusted. Yeah. I'm disgusted. I was in the building when that shit went down. Uh, no room for that. Mm-hmm. No room for that. Um, Absolutely so, not. Ah, I, I hate to be that guy, but this 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 main event was mid. It was. It was. It was all right. Okay. It was all right. So this certainly felt like a big deal in the arena. Um, they were they were billing it as the youngest main event in WrestleMania weekend history, and it was. And it absolutely was Bronson. Uh, I almost called it Bronson Steiner again. Braun Breaker and Carmelo Hayes are Braun both in their mid twenties, if I'm not mistaken. Braun Breaker, shut up. Uh, so, <laughs> you're killing me. So it's the youngest WrestleMania weekend main event in history, right? Carmelo Hayes gets this grand LA Lakers colors on his entrance. Trick Williams is doing this gigantic introduction, claiming that he is him. Carmelo Hayes' name is emblazoned on the Titantron in the Los Angeles Lakers logo style. And he's wearing a number he eight. Is on him. Yep, he is wearing no a number shit. eight on his knee pad to commemorate the late great Kobe Bryant. He is him. He's him. You know, he I is uh, him. No shit, he's him. Mm-hmm. No shit. He's got a great bop of a theme song, too. Sorry, uh, I might be going uh, to Anywho. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so uh Yeah, his, his theme song, his theme song. Because I'm the greatest uh, uh, yeah, song, you I'm gonna stop but I get yeah. yeah, I'm getting demonetized for that one. But uh literally those are the only those are the only words I know to his theme song. Cause I'm the greatest in but that's that's it. That's all I got. You wanna stop one of spec cause I get fit. You wanna smile, huh? So on the step in Damn, you know more lyrics than I do. Yeah. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, NXT is background noise to me. So when I'm watching it, I will just be on my phone or just like freaking love Carmelo Hayes, else. dude. Then I'll just fucking because I'm the greatest. Any go on, go on, go on. Yeah. I'm going way off topic here. So uh, I should note that the crowd, Carmelo Hayes was supposed to be the heel in this match, right? Well, you wouldn't yes. have been able to tell in that building because everybody was so behind Carmelo Hayes and they wanted to see him. Get to the top of the mountain. Mellow, mellow. Mellow. Yeah, it was loud in there. For um, Braun Breaker, his music, and the dog starts barking in that in your house dog house on the Tron. And I'm like, oh, he's getting booed. He's getting booed out of the building. And I don't think it's his fault necessarily, but you wouldn't be able to tell you know that he was he the baby was face. Booed? What? You know why he didn't get booed? Because he didn't break something. He didn't live up to his gimmick. Every he broke his NXT hands. Special, he broke his hands. He does that every time. He, every NXT special, every takeover, he like breaks through something, whether it be the NXT logo or just a random pile of blocks. That's his gimmick. He breaks things, and he didn't break anything this time. So that's why he was getting beat. <laughs> you sure it wasn't because Carmelo Hayes was his challenger and people wanted to see him no, win? No. No, okay. he, he didn't break. He didn't break things. Yeah. Well, I mean, in the building, I mean, I don't want to say that I wasn't into this match. I was certainly interested in it, and I wanted to see how it would play out. Um, Trick Williams actually does get ejected pretty early on um, when he tries to run interference on Braun Breaker, and the referee catches him with a smoking gun in his hands and sends him to the back. Nobody starts a na-na-na, hey-hey-hey, goodbye chant, as opposed to... Uh, when Solo Sokoa was ejected the next day, but because <laughs> they really liked Trick Williams and they wanted to see Mello win. So it was a, uh, for the hype that this match was getting, I think it was borderline very good. Borderline. 
if I'm being generous, I would say it's very good. I would say it's a good main event. Certainly could have been better, though. I definitely love the exchange at the end. I thought them trading finisher was really good. Um, but, you know, if you've seen Carmelo Hayes wrestle before, if you've seen Braun Breaker wrestle before, these two really didn't bring anything new to the table that really made me jump out of my seat, so to say. But mm-hmm. I was really happy to see Carmelo Hayes be the one to dethrone Braun Breaker and win the NXT Championship. But how did he win the NXT Championship? Oh, boy. I know this raised a lot of controversy. Let me tell you. So, Braun puts the Steiner recliner on Melo. Uh, there was no referee to see it. There was a ref bump. Melo taps out to the Steiner recliner. Braun celebrates as if he, you know, was like, you know, oh, ref's not down. I just retained. He tapped out. But Trick Williams comes out, runs some interference, hits Braun with the NXT title. Carmelo jumps up to the top, and uh, he hits his nothing but net leg drop to the back of the head. Ref stumbles awake, and he counts three and crowns Carmelo Hayes the new NXT champion. Literally would see this same exact kind of finish a few hours later in the WrestleMania opening match. Literally the same kind of finish, but um, pretty, pretty standard for a main event. I would say it's three and a quarter. I definitely think it could have been better, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, considering this is probably the biggest main event these two have ever wrestled, the biggest crowd they've probably wrote wrestling for. Not Braun Breaker, but Carmelo Hayes. But like I said, um, they're both really good wrestlers, but they didn't really bring anything new to the table. We all saw Carmelo Hayes winning. It was his time to win. I'm happy to see Hayes run with this title because I wasn't getting tired of Braun Breaker, but I definitely was ready for a new champion. Um, it was yeah. last year at the Raw after Mania where Breaker captured the NXT title from Dolph Ziggler. And I do think Breaker did a great job carrying the brand on his back. But it, it was definitely time for 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 some new for blood. And this is the part. Yeah, this is the part where I usually say, now Braun Breaker getting called to the main roster. No. No. Because what did they do? They turned him heel. Double turn. Double turn. They actually did turn Braun Breaker heel. After after what he did at the end of this show, actually presenting the championship belt to Carmelo Hayes and christening him as the new face of the brand, Carmelo Hayes is full-fledged babyface, by the way. I should let you know, Carmelo Hayes is so over with these people. Ever since he answered Adam Cole's open challenge on a random-ass episode of NXT, just like John Cena answered Kurt Angle's open challenge, and he wins his first big championship, in the same building John Cena won the WWE Championship at WrestleMania 21. You don't think that's a coincidence? You don't think that's a coincidence? Um, I would agree with you, but there's one thing that bothers me about him going full-fledged babyface. Last time I checked, babyfaces don't need their friends that hit somebody with the title to win a match. No. They could have done without that. I didn't see anything wrong with a clean win. Breaker could have taken the clean loss, and that's what kind of just... It's a plot hole, in my opinion, when it comes to, yeah, Braun Breaker just snapped and beat the hell out of Hayes after Hayes put him over on the next episode of NXT. But Hayes cheated to win the title. Don't forget that. He did. He did cheat. So I'm not saying Braun Breaker is justified because, you know, that's just him being a sore loser. and He didn't need to beat the ever-living hell out of Hayes, especially after Hayes said, you know, he didn't even, like, insult Breaker. He said, like, thank you for the amazing match. So I get what they're going with, but at the same time, Hayes still cheated to win. He sure did. Sure did. I don't know if people are going to see him as like a Seth Rollins style baby face where he just has the swagger about him and he's kind of behaving like a tweener, but I don't know. I, I think mean, the heel turn would have came off a lot better if Hayes would have just straight up won the title clean. And then if he would have went for the handshake and then Breaker just beat the living hell out of him right then and there. Mm-hmm. But I know they wanted Hayes to have his moment, so that's why they moved to NXT. Still, I just feel like the interference finish kind of hurts him in the long run when it comes to this babyface turn. But yeah, well, I Trick like Williams, matter. Trick Williams isn't going to interfere in any more matches. He's just going to be the hype man now that yeah. Mel is the face. So if like I know a lot of people have said, yeah, Braun Breaker should be called up to the main roster. Well, he just turned heel. Maybe he needs some practice as a heel before he goes up to the main roster. He has a little bit of. Uh, exposure to everything that you could do as a top star because it's clear wwe wants braun breaker to be a big deal once he's called up to raw and smackdown but 
you got to get him some more practice. You know, he's great in the ring. I never said he was bad. Like in the like in the whole time since he was introduced to us as Braun Breaker when he beat LA Knight, yeah, um, when he did all that stuff and like he was just being exposed and exposed and exposed over and over again. I was sitting there like, oh man, this is gonna get annoying. Really good in the ring. His oh. NXT title reign was, you know, he ha- he was putting on good matches. I believe, I can't remember like where he defended against certain guys at events, but I remember really loving that triple threat that he had with Dragonov and uh, JD. I want to say it was Halloween Havoc where that happened, but yeah, and he's had some great matches with Tommaso Ciampa. He's explosive and he's a speedy hoss. So I mm-hmm. feel like you can have some good matches with some people up on the main roster, but we'll get them when we get there. Did I say this show was good? I think this show was decent. We had two fantastic matches and everything else was just decent to all right. I'm going to give this show a 6.75 out of 10. Definitely go out of your way to see the NXT North American title match. And if you want to see Jar- Johnny Gargano wrestle, check out the unsanctioned. But everything else, honestly, nothing you can't see on a Tuesday night on NXT on Sunday. Yeah. I'm actually going to go with a seven, mainly because I was there live okay. and I'll, that'll bump it up a couple more points. It was definitely a fun show and I don't regret going at all. Um, loves the North American title match when I saw it first live and when I saw it back on TV, I loved it even more. Uh, love the Gargano Waller match. Um, NXT title match definitely had the right winner, um, but could have been a lot better given the hype, but. Overall, I mean, it was, you know, I, it was a fun little uh, afternoon of wrestling or morning going into afternoon in uh, our case on the Pacific Coast. But uh, this is a fun one. This is a fun one. Hopefully we can talk about some more NXT down the line. We have Battleground coming up on the same day as Double or Nothing. Um, <laughs> that is WWE's tactic of saying fuck AEW. But <laughs> it's just, yeah. Yeah, well, it's... I'm on the brink of saying fuck AEW right now, but that's another topic for another day. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, hit that subscribe button if you're new and that thumbs up as well it would be a humongous help. Definitely look forward to uh, our podcast tomorrow where we're going to be going over all the stories. It's going to be no holds barred. We're going to talk about our meet and greets that we had, some little side conversations that we had. We have a couple of shout outs to give away, which are well-deserved in my book. And I can't wait to get into those. Um, Tomas, <laughs> that was 100% I mean, I'm, unfiltered. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm, I'm still going to be, I'm still on that WrestleMania high. I was watching some of those Dang. entrances earlier and I was like, damn, just take me back already. I'm not saying oh, I'm going to feel next year. Of course not. You know, cause Philadelphia is not, you know, anywhere. But I, I would love to go to an out of state mania just once. I'm, I want to like weigh it out and see where they're going to be, but I kind of don't want to wait for them to come back to California. I no, I need inject me with more WrestleMania. I want to do it again, same. but uh, same. Yeah, we'll inject me with more WrestleCon, injects me with more meet and greets. Ah, uh, it's yeah. going to be a fun, it's so going to be, a- we'll see where they, yeah. We'll see yeah. where they end up in the next couple of years. And I might, I might just have to make another WrestleMania trip. I, I, I had that much fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too, man. But uh, guys, commence that back talk and uh, stay tuned for the next one.